Welcome back, I hope all is well. If you've been following the channel for any time at all, you know it's very rare that I make a video about therapy itself. So I don't often post videos about how to do CBT skills or DBT skills. However, when I first started the channel, I did make a video about how to complete a DBT diary card. I'll put that video up here somewhere. And actually recently, I've gotten some feedback that that video was helpful for people. So I decided I'd make another one just like it. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through how to complete a chain analysis. Now, for those of you who don't know what a chain analysis is, this is another foundational DBT tool. So DBT consists of tons and tons of different skills, and a few of them are foundational. So for example, the diary card, you're gonna use this throughout your entire DBT treatment course. The chain analysis, this is another one that's gonna be used often throughout the entire course of treatment in DBT. And in short, a chain analysis is basically a way of analyzing a problematic situation, a problematic behavior, a problematic event, and then analyzing it in order to find places of weakness where we can create change. And so we're gonna go through that today. I'm gonna to teach you how to do it. Hopefully then you can go ahead and use this in your own practice, or you can use this for yourself. It is quite helpful. So a few disclaimers before we go forward. This video is for educational purposes only. This does not constitute clinical advice. This does not constitute a clinical relationship. This is simply me making a video for educational purposes. And also, if you haven't done so already, please do go ahead and subscribe down below. Hit the thumbs up button on this video. It really is helpful, but only if you want to, there is no pressure. Oh yes, and I almost forgot. I'm also gonna teach you how to do a chain analysis in a virtual session. Like many of the DBT skills and tools, they were designed to be done on pen and paper in person. So it can be a bit challenging to figure out how to do a chain analysis in a virtual session. But fear not, I've come up with a couple of ways that are really cool, really effective, really creative, and I want to teach them to you as well. So the first thing we're going to do is go through the actual chain analysis that's in the DBT manual. Now, this right here, this is one of the DBT manuals. Uh, it comes with two. So this one has like all the explanations and teaching notes. And then there's another that has all the worksheets, handouts, and tools. I actually have an online version of that one, but regardless, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up the actual chain analysis worksheet and we're gonna go through it together. This is the chain analysis documentation that comes directly from the DBT manual. Things are quite detailed and it actually can be a little overwhelming when you look at it, but after today, you'll have a better understanding. So visually, the chain analysis is to look like this. It's a whole bunch of circles or ovals, I guess, that help us understand our problematic behaviors, the consequences, what led to them, that kind of stuff. And what we're supposed to do is visualize all the things that led up to the behavior, the behavior, the consequences, in hopes that we can identify where changes can be made. That's the gist of it. Well, let's go through how to actually do this. And so DBT puts things in step-by-step -step fashion, which I truly appreciate. And so step one, they suggest, is to describe the problem behavior. So what's an example of a problem behavior? Maybe it's lashing out in anger. Maybe it's drinking. Maybe it's isolating yourself in your room. It's really any behavior that's causing problems. So this is quite subjective, but that's for you to figure out along with the client or even for yourself. Step number two is going to be to describe the prompting event that started the chain of events leading to the problem behavior. So for example, let's say our problematic behavior is lashing out in anger. Maybe the prompting event is being asked to wash the dishes in the sink. Maybe this is the one moment you remember where everything changed. It was after being asked to wash the dishes that you became really angry and eventually lashed out. So this would be the prompting event. Step number three, describe the factors happening before the event that made you vulnerable to starting down the chain of events toward the problem behavior. In other words, what were the vulnerability factors? And so the way I like to think about these vulnerability factors is that they're not the direct cause of the problem behavior, but they certainly contribute to it. For example, maybe you didn't get a good night's sleep before this problematic behavior, so you were tired and more susceptible to lashing out. Maybe you hadn't eaten all day, again, more susceptible to lashing out. Or perhaps you had just looked at social media and you saw all your friends going on vacation and you felt quite jealous. These are all vulnerability factors. They make you more susceptible to the problematic behavior. And step number four, describe in excruciating detail the chain of events that led to the problem behavior. 
And the highlight here is going to be excruciating detail. DBT really wants you to be very, very detailed about all the little events that led up to the problematic behavior. So the example we used is being asked to wash the dishes. What were you doing right before that? Perhaps you sat down to watch TV for the first time all day. And then you stood up to get a drink of water in the kitchen. You reached for a glass and then you went to fill the glass. And then you saw your friend in the kitchen. Your friend made a comment about the dishes in the sink. You then said something sarcastic to them. They responded back to you, etc., etc. You get the point. You want to be super detailed about every single moment that led up to the problematic behavior, almost down to the minute to minute detail. Now, of course, this will not be perfect every single time, but the point is just to be really, really detailed. And then number five is going to be to describe the consequences of the problematic behavior. And this one shouldn't be too challenging. So after lashing out, what were the consequences? Perhaps the friendship was severed. Perhaps it became awkward. Perhaps there was a physical fight. There could be all sorts of consequences. Again, this is going to be unique to each and every situation, but you want to clearly lay out the consequences. So once we've done steps one through five, we're going to have a very clear depiction of the problematic behavior, the vulnerability factors, the prompting events, the events that led to the problem behavior and the consequences. And when we have this laid out on paper, it's really, really helpful for us so that we can then identify exactly where changes need to be made or even where changes could be made. And this is why DBT wants you to be in excruciating detail so that you have a lot of different opportunities to identify where change could take place. And that leads us into steps six through eight, which is where we begin to think about changing the behavior. So step six, describe skillful behaviors to replace problem links in the chain of events. So what they want you to do is refer to all the bubbles from step number four, essentially the chain of events that led up to the problematic behavior. They want you to look at that and then analyze where you can make a change. So for example, in the chain of events, perhaps we stood up to get a glass of water and filled our cup over the sink that was filled with dishes. Perhaps in that moment, we could have decided to do a couple of dishes rather than ignore them. This would be an example of a change. Or perhaps one of the behaviors was sitting down to watch TV before the chores were done. This could be a place for potential change. Or perhaps another event was making a sarcastic comment to your roommate who asked you to do the dishes. Perhaps this could be replaced with something like assertiveness. Again, these are all just hypothetical, but you get the point. And step number seven is going to be to develop prevention plans to reduce vulnerability to stressful events. So what they want you to do is think about the vulnerability factors and ways to address them. So one of our examples was not getting a good night's sleep. So maybe to prevent that, we begin working on our sleep hygiene. Or we said that another vulnerability factor could be not eating all day. So maybe we make sure that we're eating three times a day or we are not so hungry before engaging in conflict. And so step eight is going to be to look at the consequences. So what's been done and then decide on how you can best repair the situation. So for example, if getting into an altercation with your friend was one of the consequences, then maybe we can go back and have a discussion where perhaps we apologize and try to talk through a resolution in a peaceful way. All right, so now you have a new tool for your therapeutic toolbox, the chain analysis. And before we move on and I show you my virtual template and how I share that with clients in a virtual session, let me tell you about another tool. And this tool is Thryzer. They are the sponsor on today's video. They are a new company that's gonna change the game for providers in private practice. They have a whole bunch of different features and tools for you to use that are really gonna help and aid your practice. But one of the coolest benefits right now is that they provide end-to-end -end support so that your clients can use their out-of-network benefits. That's right, you heard me correctly. They will work with your client and the insurance company to make sure that they can use their out of network benefits. Now this is beneficial for two reasons. One, as a provider, you can keep your cash pay rate and two, your client can get the reimbursement they're entitled to for their therapy sessions. This is usually a real pain, really difficult to do, real headache, but Thryzer makes it super easy. And the best part is this, it's completely free. That's right, it's completely free for both you and the client. If you wanna check out Thryzer, it's free to sign up. There's a link down below in the description. So now that we know the chain analysis, let's go ahead and learn how to do this effectively in a virtual session. So like I've talked about in so many videos, I like to use Notion, and this is how I share my screen and work on things with clients during a virtual session. I'll share the link somewhere up above or down below in the description. I've created a template inside of Notion specifically for my DBT chain analysis. 
And this template is blank and ready to go anytime I'm meeting with a client. And so basically the template is formed based off of the worksheet. So as you can see here, at the very top, I have an embedded form. And this form is actually all the documentation from the DBT manual that can be used as a reference during the session. So then while meeting with a client virtually, I would share my screen and I would share this particular screen with them. So then we would be working on the template together. And so as we met, we would start with problem behavior, right? So I'd have them tell me their problem behavior and we would go ahead and we would start typing that out. We would then go through the rest of the chain analysis in the same exact way. And you can see here, it looks pretty nice. It's laid out in a pretty organized way. I do recognize that the only downside is that you cannot draw circles or use a pen inside of Notion. If this is going to be a big deterrent for you, then you can use this in conjunction with the whiteboard feature on Zoom. The whiteboard allows you to draw and use a pen tool. And another alternative, which I do not use, but I am aware of, is another program called Miro. You can go ahead and look that up on your own if you feel like you want to do that. And then the other really cool thing I like about Notion is that once we're done with this chain analysis, you can simply come over here and you can export this as a PDF and then easily send it to a client for their own reference. So that's pretty much it. Now you know how to do the chain analysis and you can even do one with a client in a virtual session. And hey, if there's tools that you use and ways that you share your screen that are pretty cool and effective, I would love to know. Put them down below in the comments. Hopefully this is helpful for you. Hopefully you learned something. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you soon.